So, many of you saw my recent video covering the collapse of the Defy Media MCN and how the closure of that business ultimately resulted in 50 independent channel creators having $1.7 million of their earnings just stolen. This is the problem with MatPat's video. It's oversimplified to the point of total inaccuracy. For those of you who are unfamiliar with the situation, a 30,000 foot overview. Defy Media was an MCN, a multi-channel network. MCNs basically manage a YouTuber's channel, the entire channel. They are supposed to pair the most appropriate ads with videos to maximize AdSense revenue. They're supposed to work on brand deals to maximize a YouTuber's revenue. They're supposed to provide editing software, custom thumbnails, copyright free music. They go after copyright infringement. If your video is illegally uploaded on another channel, they are supposed to go after that channel, either have it taken down or claimed. In exchange for the services they provide, they take a percentage of that YouTuber's revenue. It could be 40 to 50% of AdSense revenue. It could be 20 to 30% of video licensing. It could be five to 25% of brand deals. How does the MCN get paid? The YouTuber allows YouTube to remit directly to the MCN the revenue generated from the channel. The MCN in turn takes its percentage of the cut and whatever other services they render for and on behalf of the YouTuber. Once the MCN takes its cut, it remits to the YouTuber the balance, what is remaining of the revenue generated from the YouTube channel. And what happened with Defy Media? They seem to have gone bust, closed their doors, gone bankrupt, without having remitted to the YouTubers the balance of what was owing to the YouTubers after Defy would have taken whatever cut they were entitled to. Matt Pat and apparently 50 other YouTubers whose channels were being managed by Defy Media as an MCN seem to have not been paid upwards of $1.7 million that Defy ought to have remitted to them had Defy Media stayed in business. That's the context. I've done two videos on this before. I'll put the links in the comment section. You can go check them out if you want. So I'm not going to repeat myself, but I'm going to break down Matt Pat's most recent video on the subject because it is such an oversimplification that it borders on a mischaracterization of what happens in bankruptcy. That money, our channel's rightful earnings sent to us by YouTube, now resides trapped in a bank account. Incidentally, before I go on, I am Viva Fry, a Montreal litigator turned YouTuber. I put out law vlogs, cooking vlogs, fishing vlogs, GoPro vlogs. I have a nice channel. Like, share, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and tell your friends I'm trying to grow this channel. I appreciate the support. Now, back to the analysis. $1.7 million of their earnings just stolen. From them. In previous videos, I had taken issue with Matt Pat's qualification of what happened to him and the other YouTubers as theft. That's my daughter, she's in a lot of videos. We pulled out one of her teeth with a squirrel. If you haven't seen that video, check it out. Uh -oh. He's got it. He's got the piece. Did it work? Is the tooth out? Uh -huh. <laughs> And we pulled out a tooth while playing, what was the song? Heart and Soul on the Piano. Parentheses closed. Matt Pat says that they had their money stolen from them. Theft has a very specific meaning. Not being repaid money that is owed to you is not theft. It's not theft because the goods were not taken in the first place without the authorization of the owner. I'm gonna get back to this in a bit, but the YouTubers in question all authorized YouTube to remit directly to the MCN the revenue generated from their channel so that the MCNs could take their cut and then remit the balance back to the YouTubers. So being stiff on what is owed to you because a company goes bankrupt, it's not theft. It's unfortunate, but calling it theft implies criminal intent and it also moralizes the issue. Matt Pat, you're not gonna like this. Defy Media didn't steal from you and the other YouTubers any more than they stole from Allied Bank. Let's get back to this. That money, our channel's rightful earnings, sent to us by YouTube, now resides trapped in a bank account. This description is inaccurate. When anyone signs on with an MCN, when anyone signs on with a video licensing agency that is gonna handle the money, monetization of your video on YouTube is going to claim your video on YouTube. The way MatPat is describing it makes it sound like the MCN grabs the money while it's going from YouTube to the YouTuber, which is not the case. The YouTuber has authorized specifically to allow YouTube to remit the revenues generated to the MCN and then MCN splits it as per the terms of their contract with the YouTuber. They're treating it like Defy's money when it's actually ours. They're treating it like Defy's money when it is actually ours. This is what MatPat doesn't understand in bankruptcy and I'm I'm gonna illustrate it perfectly so that everyone understands. Let's just say that Defy goes bankrupt and this is the last dollar bill that they have. Who does this belong to? Matt Pat is saying that this $5 belongs to me and the other YouTubers because Defy never owned it in the first place. Ally is gonna say this $5 belongs to me because even though I loaned them a million dollars, that loan didn't belong to them. If this is the last $5 in Defy's bank account, who does it belong to? That is the purpose of bankruptcy laws. It is impossible to determine who this $5 belongs to because there are creditors with competing claims who are owed money from the bankrupt. And that's why you get a trustee who abides by principles of bankruptcy law who comes in and says, look, we have 
competing claims as to who this $5 belongs to. So guess what? We are gonna divide it up equally and split it prorated to each creditor based on the size of their claim with one caveat. Are there any secured creditors? But let's get there. We got a response from Ally Bank. Ally made a loan to Defy Media that it was unable to pay back after experiencing excessive losses and the owners refused to continue to support the company. Defy is being liquidated by a professional hired by their board of directors and Ally stands to lose most of its loan. We are sympathetic to everyone caught up in this mess and unfortunately Ally is also experiencing a substantial loss as a result. So sorry for your loss, Ally thoughts and prayers. Why is that fair for Matt Pat to say? So sorry for your loss, Ally, thoughts and prayers, sarcastically. What if Ally says the same thing to Matt Pat? So sorry for your loss, Matt Pat, thoughts and prayers. Matt Pat's entire position is predicated on the idea that he is somehow a bigger victim than the bank and therefore is entitled to some sort of prioritized repayment of the monies that are owed to him versus the bank. And it is a fundamentally flawed way of looking at the situation and it's a fundamentally inaccurate understanding of how bankruptcy works. This, ladies and gentlemen, is not a response. It's a Jedi mind trick. It's a tactic called false equivalence. Sorry, Mad Pat. It is a response. It's not a response you like, but it's not only an accurate response, it is a response that is justified in laws as per bankruptcy laws. We have Ally Bank, a company who in 2017 had revenues of $9.8 billion. Why is it relevant how much Ally made in 2018? Does being rich somehow preclude you from getting repaid a loan that you made? Trying to say that it's a victim of Defy Media's closure in the same way that we, YouTubers who film in our closets, are victims of Defy Media's closure. That the money that they stand to lose is equivalent to the money that we earned, had sent to us by way of Defy, and now remains trapped in Defy's bank accounts. Matt Pat, let's just assume to keep it easy that Ally loaned a million dollars to Defy. Ally earned that million dollars that is now trapped in Defy's bank account. In the exact same way that you earned the YouTube revenue that is now trapped in Defy's bank accounts, the only thing that is different different is how the money got there. One was by way of a loan from Ally to Defy. The other was by way of authorization by the YouTubers as per the payment terms of Defy as an MCN. But at the end of the day, both you and Ally have money trapped in Defy's bank accounts that you both earned and that you both authorized Defy to hold for whatever the reason. That money is not the same, Ally and I think you know that. The classic I think you know that is not an argument. First of all, why is the money not the same? Ally earned its money, it loaned it to Defy, Defy went bankrupt and now has Ally's money trapped in its bank account. You earned your YouTube money. You allowed Defy to handle it, to deduct what was owed to them before remitting it to you. They went bankrupt, now they have your money trapped in their bank account. How is it different? How are you more entitled to your dollar earned than Ally is entitled to their dollar earned? At some point, Ally Bank chose to make a commercial loan to Defy Media. How much was that loan for? Unclear. How much was paid back before Defy closed? Not sure, but none of it matters. It doesn't matter how much Ally got reimbursed on its loan. To whom does it not matter? To MatPat and the other YouTubers? How about if Ally says it doesn't matter how much Defy has reimbursed to MatPat and the other YouTubers? Not caring about what is owed to someone else is not an argument for denying it. Because at its core, a loan is a risk. It is a gamble. It is a business risk, an investment. And at some point, you and the other 50 YouTubers chose to allow Defy Media to act as MCN and to be the middle person to receive your YouTube revenue to deduct what is owing to them before remitting the balance to you. It was a decision as well. Obviously, you regret the decision now and whether or not it was a good decision to begin with is arguable, but it was a decision. If I go to Vegas and start putting bets on blackjack, sure, I'm hoping to get good cards and earn more money, but if I lose, I have no reason to complain because I knowingly made the bet with the hopes of higher returns. Matt Pat, you have to appreciate that everything you are saying about Ally's business relationship with Defy applies mutatis mutandis to your business relationship with Defy. Mutatis mutandis means applying the required modifications to make it applicable. You chose to do business with Defy. You chose to allow Defy to receive your revenue from YouTube so that they could take their cut and give you the balance. You chose to do that because you thought it would bring you a higher rate of return on your YouTube monetization. These situations are virtually identical. Everyone was acting, obviously, with Defy in the hopes of making money off Defy. MatPat, if you and the other YouTubers were not hoping to make more money by using Defy services, you never would have used them in the first place. And it isn't like losing these sorts of bets should come as some big surprise to you, Ally, because between 2006 and 2015, over 17% of small business loans ended up going into default. They didn't end up getting paid back. This is a very 
interesting statistic, Matt Pat. You are correct. Small businesses go bankrupt. Companies default on loans they owe to the banks. But when a bank makes a loan to a company, it's not putting a million dollars on a blackjack table hoping for 21. It is a calculated risk and it's a calculated investment. It's not just a gamble. You don't make $10 billion in profits by just dropping a million dollars on a blackjack table. They are calculated risks, true, but they are calculated in the sense that they are also protected with security, which is why banks typically get repaid first in bankruptcy because they are what we call secured creditors. They don't just give a million dollars to someone and say, ah, if you pay us back, you pay us back. That's not how banks stay in business, especially when, as you noted, so many companies go bankrupt. A bank would not be in business for very long if it just said, here's a million dollars, it's a gamble, we're at a blackjack table, if we make money, we make money. No, they loan the money after doing a due diligence, but they secure their loan so that if it doesn't get repaid, they have ways of salvaging as much as they can on their loan. They didn't end up getting paid back. That was a known risk. That is what you do. You lost. I'm sorry, it sucks, but it's true. That's the game. Maybe what happens in bankruptcy was not a known risk to you, and I say that without any form of judgment because bankruptcy law is confusing even to seasoned lawyers. But anytime you allow someone to hold money for you or before paying you, you are running the risk of them going bankrupt and you never getting paid. Every time I as a lawyer render services for a client, I run the risk of that client going bankrupt and never paying me for the time that I worked for them. Is it theft? No! You run the risk of that person going bankrupt, being placed in bankruptcy protection, Having a trustee come in and say, oh boy, they owe a million dollars to 10 people, but they only have $100,000 in the bank account. Well, guess what? I don't get paid first just because I feel slighted. I don't get paid first just because I work out of my basement. I get 10 cents on the dollar like everybody else because that's the only fair way it works in bankruptcy. With the exception of the secured creditors who use legal protections to secure their loans with assets, guarantees, receivables, and they get repaid first because they in law are secured creditors who are paid preferentially to unsecured secured creditors. It's the law and it doesn't change just for the small guy any more than it should change for the big guy. That's the game. That 1.7 million dollars that us creators are owed. That 1.7 million dollars that us creators are owed are our paychecks. And they're not even paychecks from Defy Media. They're paychecks sent to us from YouTube through Defy to us. And do you see why it might be offensive to us that you're trying to loop your victimhood, your bad business decisions, into us and our losses? Because you find something offensive doesn't mean it is wrong. Some people might say that they find it offensive that you are trying to rely on your own personal victimhood status to prioritize yourself to the other creditors. There are a lot of people who are gonna get stiffed money owing to them by Defy in this bankruptcy. You are not entitled to a preferential payment any more than any other creditor just because you're a small YouTuber who may work out of his closet. The same thing happens when a bank is deciding to make a commercial loan. They are allowed to and supposed to go through a process called due diligence. Basically an investigation into the inner workings of a business to see just how healthy that business really is. Speaking of due diligence, I presume MatPat and all of the other YouTubers who chose to use Defy as an MCN did their own due diligence. The scope of the due diligence will vary to fit the nature of why you're doing the due diligence. So when you and the other YouTubers decided to use Defy, you did your own due diligence. You compared Defy Media as an MCN against the others. You compared what Defy was offering you versus what the other MCNs were offering you, and you decided to go with them. The same way Ally did its own due diligence, but the due diligence that a bank does before deciding to loan a company millions of dollars is probably a little different in scope and nature than the due diligence a YouTuber does before deciding to go with a specific MCN. And speaking of bad business decisions, it may be a bad business decision to do work with an MCN. I happen to believe that it is, which is why I've never used an MCN. Why would I need one entity to handle my entire channel when I can use individual video licensing agencies for individual videos? Get all the same benefits without the same risk. It might have been a bad business decision to do business with an MCN. And you know darn well you would be very irritated if Ally said, too bad, it was a known risk. Suck it up. They mentioned this professional who's going to be hired on by Defy's board of directors to parse out where Defy's remaining money goes to. But let's talk for a minute about boards of directors and who actually sits on them. The people who are outright choosing the professional who decides how Defy's assets get liquidated and parceled out. And who do you think that person is going to prioritize in making whole? The big company who had a hand in helping them get the job in the first place? 
or a bunch of nameless, faceless creators. This description by MatPat is 100% inaccurate. The professional hired by the board of directors to liquidate the assets of Defy typically is called a trustee, and they don't act on the instructions of the board of directors at all. They abide by the law which provides for how assets are distributed in bankruptcy. The trustee is independent and does not take instruction from the board of directors. And if the board of directors had affected any sort of preferential or fraudulent payments of monies before the company went into bankruptcy or bankruptcy protection, the trustee comes in and claws back those amounts to put them back in the assets of the estate to be divided up among the creditors prorated based on the size of their claim. Even large institutions like you, Ally, deserve fairness and justice. I'm not saying that you don't, but let's be realistic not gonna happen. Certain people are gonna have to get prioritized over others. Certain people are not going to get prioritized over others. That's the whole point of bankruptcy. No creditor gets prioritized over another creditor when they are ordinary unsecured creditors. Secured creditors get prioritized, but in virtue of the law. There are specific legislative provisions that provide for the protection of secured creditors. It's a whole type of law in and of itself. But no, MatPat, no unsecured creditor is preferred to another unsecured creditor, and that's a double-edged sword because MatPat, it means that you're not going to be prioritized over another unsecured creditor just because of how Defy came to hold the money they owe you. It sucks to have to compare who was more victimized by a corrupt business, but guess what? That's what the professional hired by Defy's board of directors is going to have to decide. No! The trustee does not come in and decide who is more victimized by the corrupt company. That's not what the trustee does. The trustee treats everyone equally in bankruptcy. That's why they are there. To avoid the company paying out people by preference. One, that the creator income that sits in Defy's bank accounts was never Defy's to begin with, and that the investment that Ally lost was part of a loan that went bad. It was a calculated risk on your part. Matt Pat, the other YouTubers, whenever we decide to do business with an MCN or a video licensing agency, things can go bad and it was a calculated decision on our parts. What's up, dude? Go watch Peter Pan. Two, that Ally had a chance to double check their work, go through a process of due diligence to ensure that Defy was a sound investment, a luxury and privilege that us creators never had. Wrong. You and all the other YouTubers had your chance to do your due diligence and make your decision. Do I go with big name Defy Media? Are they a more reliable, more trustworthy MCN than a smaller brand that I've never heard of? That's the due diligence that you did as a YouTuber to end up with Defy in the first place. Does that mean that it's a surefire bet that nothing's ever gonna go wrong? No, it's a calculated business decision. Things go wrong in business. Three, that Ally may have more of a hand in deciding the professional who ends up liquidating Defy's assets and thereby deciding where that money goes. Wrong. A trustee, whichever trustee is going to get in there, unless the trustee doesn't abide by the law, is going to apply the law, pay out the secured creditors in order of their securities, which involves registration and a whole bunch of other complicated things we're not going to get into, and then they are going to divvy up what is left, prorated among all the unsecured creditors with no preference, no judgment, no comparing who is the bigger victim to Defy's corrupt business practices. I get it. You have a right to be angry, ally. I am too. You have a right to want your money back. But don't you for a second say that your situation is the same as ours. And if it does end up being that you get your money back before us creators, just remember where that money's coming from. Because at this point, you know where it's coming from. You will, in accepting that money, be clawing back your bad investment losses out of the pockets of people who you supposedly represent. And if you are comfortable with that, I do hope you consider changing your motto, 8,000 allies all looking out for one thing, you. Matt Pat, just for a second, let's suppose that you and the other 50 YouTubers get paid first. Where did your money come from? He's angry, it's obvious. So is Ally and so is everybody else who is gonna get stiffed by Defy Media, but bankruptcy laws apply. And as bad as everyone can feel for one party over another, pity does not trump application of the law. Okay, I gotta go. Like, share, subscribe, hit the notification bell. Peace out, booyah.